In question right now, they're kind of in uncharted territory right now. Yeah, it certainly seems that way. Full. thanks very much. The New York Times has a new article uh, that's just out. I want to read from it. President Trump called the FBI director, James B. Comey, weeks after he took office and asked him when federal authorities were going to put out word that Mr. Trump was not personally under investigation, according to two people briefed on the call. This, again, is reporting by the New York Times. They go on to say, Mr. Comey told the president that if he wanted to know details about the Bureau's investigations, he should not contact him directly, but instead follow the proper procedures and have the White House counsel send any inquiries to the Justice Department, according to those people. It goes on. After explaining to Mr. Trump how communications with the FBI should work, Mr. Comey, Comey believed he had effectively drawn the line after a series of encounters he had with the president and other White House officials that he felt jeopardized the FBI's independence. At the time, Mr. Comey was overseeing the investigation into links between Mr. Trump's associates and Russia. That's Michael Schmidt's reporting in the New York Times. Jeff Zeleny is back uh, with more. This is, uh, Jeff, I mean, this is fascinating stuff. The idea that uh, there would be this direct contact which goes against all protocol. Anderson, it's very interesting. And again, more reporting from Michael Schmidt, who broke the story earlier in the week about those memos. And I think what it speaks to is the president's mindset, certainly even before uh, he uh, was sworn into office, that he was seemed obsessed by um, someone clearing him of any wrongdoing in any of this. So that's why he started those uh, you know, uh, uh, conversations with the FBI director. But it's so clear, based on this reporting at least, that James Comey has a deep paper trail. The White House has said, look, those conversations didn't happen. Uh, but that's really all they've done. They've not... of you know specifics about this but james comey he's known across washington as being very um meticulous in taking a notes like this and the the president was trying to move on from this at the news conference earlier today he said no no next question and was not talking about james comey but anderson what this shows is there's more to hear from the james comey side that will come out either in congressional testimony, if he testifies, or with the special counsel. But I'm also struck by remembering that day in January when the FBI director, who stands six foot eight, he's a towering figure, the president called him up and brought him sort of into yeah, we're a bear hug. In video, we've seen so many times, Anderson. And that, according to this story and other reporting we've done, made the FBI director so uncomfortable at the time, at the moment. Now we know why if the supporting is to be believed, but it, again, is more a layers of the onion about the unusual yeah. contact with the president and the FBI director. You know, Jeff, I mean, what's so fascinating about the call that the New York Times uh, is just reporting on is just the personal nature which which the president of the United States believes he can influence things or sort of his desire to do things personally, whether it's making that call or whether it's, you know, uh, getting Jeff Sessions out of the office and getting the vice president out of the office and having a private conversation with the director of the FBI, which the White House is now refuting. Although, frankly, I don't know why anyone would believe what the White House says, because some unnamed White House official saying, oh, that conversation between uh, Comey and the president never happened. The only way they would know that is depending on what the president of the United States told them. And we know that the president has told them things which either are not true uh, or which he then refutes the day later. No question about it. The credibility is on the line. Everything, uh, every story that has come out, and boy, this week there have been so many of them. The instant response from the, the White House is to say, no, that did not happen. That is not true. The reality here, though, the communications uh, people in this White House only know what they are told, quite frankly. All of this emanates from the Oval Office itself. And the president did not, he had the opportunity, a forum this afternoon, of course, to explain his side of the Comey story, but he quickly moved on beyond that. He also said something else that I'm just remembering now, Anderson, at that news conference today. He said, even my enemies have said I'm not uh, implicated in this at all. Well, that's just not true. The fact of the matter is people across the board have said, look, we don't know if there is collusion. That's why there needs to be an investigation. But boy, the side from James Comey, we're getting more and more of this, uh, certainly must be frustrating to the White House. But as of yet, we've not seen the president sort of release anything to refute any of these uh, very detailed recollections from James yeah, Comey. Jeff Zellany, thanks very much. Coming up next, the president's insistence that he is the real victim here. We're keeping him honest on that. And later, what our legal minds have to say about what Congress and now a special counsel are investigating.